Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Afters Podcast, where we chit chat away about Vancouver's nightlife and industry and EDM and music scene. And we have the very talented Night Begins on the pod today. Welcome so in. Thank you for being here. First podcast. So exciting. Cherry popping. Cherry popping yeah. all yeah. over the place. Yeah. But I do do my folklore spotlight. Mm-hmm. So you like, do. You know, I talk. I talk to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You're good at talking. Yeah. 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 We like to sure. talk to people. We just don't. Yeah. We all don't just sit in our homes and make music <laughs> the entire yeah. time. We do like to get yeah. out, out of Absolutely. the house every once in a while. Uh, yeah, once in a while. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. Really yeah. Like yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Super to be cool here. Super yeah. Here. Yeah. 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 Well, let's dive right in. I'm mm-hmm. excited. Totally. So let's go back. All the way back, we obviously know that you love music now, you're in the city, in Vancouver scene, but if you think back to one of the first times that you really fell in love with music, what was that experience for you? The furthest back I could imagine was probably like eight or nine listening to like Daft Punk and Chemical Brothers Ooh. with my dad in yeah. a little single bedroom apartment and his uh, single parent and me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We would listen to those on like uh, on yeah like CDs or like Kazaa or like mm-hmm. Wham. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like those were like some really really old like mm-hmm. MP3 streaming things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, listening to that kind of stuff back then was just like that was the first experience with electronic music that I really had. Yeah. And that was just like formative, but I didn't mm-hmm. really realize that it was formative until I think about it now. Because mm-hmm. back then I was just like listening to whatever. You know, mm-hmm. like, or Nickelback or like that kind of shit. Yeah. It's like whatever, this is all music, right? Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm like, no, that was fucking EDM. Like that was yeah. like, before EDM was sure thing, a yeah. genre. Yeah. Or the mass, you know, it's not even really a genre anymore. It is they would they like, would just call it electro. Yeah. yeah. The or blanket techno. or techno, I still the blanket. Have a yeah. friend who still calls all EDM techno. And yeah. He like low key just doesn't piss me off. Yeah, just to troll also, it. Yeah. yeah. He also just has no idea like yeah. what like any subgenres are, which yeah. is completely uh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We can't we can't win them all. No, 100%. Yeah. So yeah, now that EDM is like the you know all encompassing umbrella that mm-hmm. it is, it's just like it's so easy for me to be like, yeah, that was EDM and back then. Yeah, it was just music. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that was probably like my first experience on it that I can mm-hmm. remember. You yeah. Know? Was your father into like electronic music or was he just a music head of some kind? He was just in the yeah, he was like he just liked music. He was yeah. into whatever. He liked lots of random shit, but uh yeah, it was it was that like Chemical Brothers, Daft Punk, um, way before Daft Punk was big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew uh, him, guys. Uh, I talked to him on the phone. <laughs> probably like the Crystal Method as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And then like after that would probably be um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the knife. Um, the knife no the knife. i'm not familiar no. with it no. no i did my uh so i do the local artist spotlight yeah mm-hmm. featured local artists yeah and yeah. um the best edm albums of all time yeah uh, silent shout by the knife was okay i think it was the first one that i did because that was like for real like the first edm that i really listened to where it was like i think that changed like me that's when you decided mm-hmm. like this is what i want to do this is what i yeah. yeah. And, and was, when was that? Like what time range did that come out at? That was like 12 years ago. That was like 12 when I first So was, so so how, like what year would that be? Like in the early 2000s, late 90s? I'm 30. I know okay. I'm so terrible at math. Right. So let's just not, ballpark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so ballpark. Yeah. I'm not even going to try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're what maybe 18 in your teen years? So I was it was when I was 13. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 13. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I had so you're 30 now. So it would have been um, oh, okay. early, early 2000s. Yeah, right. early 2000s. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I had like one of those clock radios that had a CD yeah. player in it. Yes. Yeah. And I yes. used to just like run this CD nonstop. And it was like, mm. uh, the knife is like this really experimental um, European brother and sister. Um, mm. And they are like incredibly lush like soundscapes but with like extremely syndicated like drums and synths and kind of mm-hmm. like dead mouse scene mm-hmm. just cool. really really crazy like uh experimental ahead of its time stuff and i was listening yeah. to this shit like, <clears throat> on my clock radio yeah. and mm-hmm. like on my uh my probably like my discman and then like my mm-hmm. ipod yeah uh, in high school and that was I, I i was thinking about this on the way here because i'm like yeah. i've been wanting to talk about yeah yeah memories for yeah yeah for like, sure i've probably told my friends a million times but yeah it's super cool to be sharing it now yeah yeah when i when i think about that kind of stuff now i'm like well i'll, I'll like 
set the stage for you. I'm like in, you know, English class in like grade nine and mm-hmm. I'm listening to this stuff and I'm listening to it on like these old crappy like Apple ear earbuds, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Those sound. things sucked. <laughs> they yeah. Suck, right? yeah. So they would bleed yeah. sound and I would be like self conscious as fuck like yeah. listening to this music because I'm like, I know it's weird. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh-huh. I know it's weird. Like all Yeah, everybody's music. listening yeah. to like Puff Daddy. Yeah. I was listening yeah. to that kind of yeah. shit too. Maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe not P. Diddy as much, but yeah. uh, you know, like fucking Justin Timberlake. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Not nowadays, yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, and stuff yeah. like that. But I was also listening to this and I was just like acutely aware in my, my you know, hyper sensitive like uh, teen years that like this was like weird shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would like if it Yeah, was, not mainstream for sure. Yeah. yeah. And if I was yeah. cranking it up loud enough where people around me could hear it, they'd literally be like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I just like I couldn't stop. I would just mm-hmm. be rinsing it. So yeah. like, this is like yeah. I love this. I love this so much. And so that's why I did it as yeah, Silent Show is the album. They have mm-hmm. a, a really big song self titled Silent Show that's mm-hmm. like uh, kind of like mainstream, but anyway. I'll have to I'm look it up for digress. sure. It's yeah, I'm interested. Cool. So that was kind of the first first uh yeah that I can think of. Like yeah. Yeah. that just made me completely fall in love with it. But I didn't really know that that was happening mm-hmm. while yeah. it was happening. Well, yeah, yeah you just was. you don't really understand your, how your love is growing for a thing until you're like look back, you yeah. know, twenty years later, and you're like, oh, that was my childhood, but it informed who I am today and how I listen to things, how I consume stuff, where I go to shows, what music I make as well, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. You just, you just don't realize it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and life's just crazy too. When you're a kid, you're not really thinking about much. No, you just kind of naturally gravitate towards what you love. You know, you kind of like just, you don't even think like, I mean, some kids might (laughs) think we were the weirdos that were like, no, we should stick to what's cool. No, no, no. (laughs) I I mean, I listened to mostly hip hop and R&B at that age. So like that, Mm -hmm. what that age, I'm like talking 1992, 93. And that was definitely not the mainstream music back then. Yeah. It was like pop music and grunge. And I also listened to grunge too. And, Mm -hmm. but it was definitely not at the time. And then, you know, by the time 1998, 97, 98, 99, mm-hmm. hip hop started to really become mainstream. And then it took over. It literally, yeah. literally has took over. It's, a, yeah. it's actually statistically the most popular genre of music in the world is hip hop right now. Oh, In the whole world. Yeah. yeah. So currently, currently it is, the, yeah. it is overtaken all genres. Hip hop mm-hmm. is the most popular genre of music in the I world. I believe that. Yeah, because yeah, think about it, every country has hip hop now. Like Asian countries, European, like they all have hip hop. It's mm-hmm. and it's definitely like the pop music. Yeah, yeah. I listen to a lot of gangster rap back then. Yeah, really? like a ton of like you know like yeah. Biggie Smalls and like yeah, just everything. When I was you know a, a white uh, like middle class <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, in Victoria, I'm from the island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm just like you know rolling around on my longboard with my buddies, just blasting stuff that was like my yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think within yeah. that genre, correct me if I'm wrong, because I really didn't grow up listening to too much of it besides like Eminem that filtered mm-hmm. through my little world. But um, it just had so much emotion and passion and grit and like yeah, everything was, was so well formulated. Storytelling. Too. There was a lot of storytelling that doesn't exist anymore. There's yeah. a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, cultural insight that. It's it's it does exist now in a more vapid way, mm-hmm. you know. Like the cultural insight before was like what it's like to to grow up in the streets or grow up in like these areas and stuff. Mm-hmm. And now the cultural insight is like how to party and how to yeah. do drugs and all that stuff that yeah. it's de- degraded into. So mm-hmm. um, stories but were told well too. They were, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm big on like just I mean, I'm like a grammar nerd. I like yeah. English a lot. Yeah. Same. Like that subject. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, love, I love it. Like I can pronounce stuff really well yeah mm-hmm. so i always had like a a real respect for that kind of stuff yeah like storytelling mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. just storytelling it's like storytelling that rhymes mm-hmm. it's rhythmic and it's rhyming it's it, got like the rhymes yeah. can be in different spots like some of the good rappers like like biggie for example like yeah. people don't understand some people just know biggie as a reputation as a brand mm-hmm. but as a lyricist and a rhymer he was literally completely elite mm. you know he would do rhymes where words would be in different parts of the sentences and like a like the emphasis you would, you, would be it's on not yeah it's not necessarily right at the you. end of the of the line it could be in the middle here and the middle here and it rhymes here and here too and here and here and here too and it's just like yeah what is going on right now yeah. and it's like and there's there there used to be a lot more of that where it was yeah really w- very very technical definitely and yeah. i think one thing that's also missed too I was watching R.L. Grimes. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, 
mm -hmm. uh, interview on Diary of a CEO. And these guys <clears throat> were such pioneers in mm -hmm. the industry. And they were also businessmen For at sure, the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. They were so smart. They were so well calculated. They knew the industry. They knew the business in order to like get you know people mm -hmm. in where it's not necessarily like the thing to do, you know, to have that kind of image being portrayed all over. Yeah. And, 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 and I mean, we're going to lay a little bit off topic, but, you know, they had to learn that in, a, in an environment where the executives were all highly educated, highly experienced, and mm -hmm. literally against them, you yeah. know what I mean, trying to rip them off. I mean, that still happens today, but, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've democratized the ability to become famous somewhat with social mm -hmm. media and the internet. So, yeah. you know, you can, if you want to, you can completely stay independent if you want for the most part and yeah. get some... Yeah. Whereas Expe back yeah, in the day, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting yeah. topic. Street Compton was yeah. like, that, was, that hit me hard, that yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah big time. In what yeah. way? Uh, just like the what you were talking about, about mm -hmm. how taken advantage of a lot of these yeah. people are, just like their like, incredible talent. Yeah. Just like, yeah, just... Uh, they, have no mm -hmm. they have no exposure to yeah. the industry. Like, the, whatever, it's, I mean, you're... Mm -hmm. Here's a you contract. Know, yeah, here's a contract. <laughs> you get to live a lifestyle you never thought was ever possible. Mm -hmm. But they're literally giving you ten percent, yeah. you know, or or less, you know. So that for every Just like hundred million lights. dollars that you're pulling in for them, they're giving you two million, and you think that's amazing. Yeah. But then you realize what you should be making, and it's like over. it's insane, you know. Yeah. You know, I remember, I remember there was a big controversy with TLC. Like they were saying they're making like two cents off of every album sale. That's like, crazy. Like after like all the touring fees, all the. Uh, record uh executive uh record company like takes and mm -hmm. the cost because they were they were they were charged with the cost of materials the cost of manufacturing like wow. that was all built into their contract yeah it was wild what they were getting charged for like mm. you know for what you know and then like they said they were making like two cents per album and that to divide that between three girls yeah like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's very uh, yeah. yeah yeah now it's very much um, well you you gotta yeah, i mean nowadays you gotta make money on the tour that's mm -hmm. that's where you make money now like i mean with with spotify and you're not selling albums really anymore like no they've got if a, if an artist all covered you know if an artist sells a million records or cds or albums these days that is a huge aberration mm. you know but yeah. at the same time you know if you're a big pop star like taylor swift for example which is like a modern one mm -hmm. you know she's like the modern day madonna janet jackson michael jackson where she's got this huge 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 tour that's Mm -hmm. you know making a billion dollars you know yeah. no problem you yeah. know and that she gets to keep most of that that's mm -hmm. on her i mean obviously she pays for her production and staffing and all yeah. that stuff but She's being generous, she keeps most of that whereas all of her music sales like yeah. she probably gets none of that yeah. um, well i mean she i think she bought her stuff back or something she now so now she does but like stuff. yeah she had oh yeah that's what she did yeah. yeah so because she was making nothing off of it yeah, you know, well, the record so it, company, yeah. it got sold to somebody else yeah. i don't know the full story yeah yeah it, something but, like that like but she yeah, yeah. she so she re-recorded sure it all taylor swift person yeah i'm sure somebody can yeah. any swifties us. out there <laughs> feel free to write in the comments and tell us how <laughs> that goes down i'm sure we could research it too but that's okay but, but the um, gist of it is, is she makes money the off point of this yeah she makes the money off the tour which is most what most artists even even nowadays like for electronic artists you're not making money off of streams and plays and you're, you're making money off the tour yeah. the yeah. guy in the left is quiet is this left or this left your left <laughs> so with taylor swift making millions and yeah. little guys like us making chiplets yes. um <laughs> how do we get ahead in this world yeah. i don't know yeah. but <laughs> what we will dial back to is kind of growing up and then finding your love of music in the mm -hmm. outside world too because yeah. you mentioned you grew up in victoria yeah. started partying in victoria finding all the music yeah how did you get into <laughs> that scene that is probably like the f my favorite part of my life mm -hmm. um lots of crazy stories uh i can paraphrase a couple of them because i could go. go on for yeah. a long time <laughs> yeah. um so yeah it was like chemical brothers daft punk and then it was the knife and then it was like just a like nervous fucking gangly teenager like this tall but like even skinnier yeah. and I was just like couldn't mm -hmm. couldn't really find my place in high school I had like a really close friend this was like grade grade 10 probably yeah. so probably like 15 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so I had a couple close friends but like didn't really fit in anywhere else and yeah I just felt just felt like I didn't really belong anywhere mm -hmm. didn't have a great high school experience um until 
I started, uh, I started hanging out with uh, <laughs> a group of kids downtown Victoria. Mm -hmm. And downtown Victoria is like, I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's, yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. you know. It's, it's quaint, it's whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. quaint, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but we still had like a seedy part of it, sure. a little bit. Sure. Um, <laughs> it's a little sketchy. It's definitely, it's nothing do. compared, yeah, yeah nothing yeah. compared to like a city's downtown, like an actual yeah. city's downtown. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's Victoria downtown, but yeah. still. It's we, like small towns, small towns downtown. Totally. But <laughs> yeah. we found our way into lots of trouble and one of those ways was uh this after hours club called mm. sunset room mm -hmm. okay which okay. is on uh herald street which is a few blocks out of downtown like behind this valley village and uh sunset room was open 10 p.m to 5 a.m mm -hmm. fridays nice. and saturdays yeah it was a true after yeah. hours place yeah. uh 16 plus okay. no booze yeah. um just like a Com not a commissary but like mm -hmm. whatever they had snacks yeah. and water yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. stuff like that um and so me and this group of people that I started hanging out with and I think I I met them through like a friend of a friend or something and I was just like oh these kids like smoke darts like they like to mm -hmm. you know party and stuff like this is mm -hmm. dope and then they brought me to this place sunset room mm -hmm. and it was like a real fucking rave like yeah. it was a real rave like my yeah. first real rave mm -hmm. and I just fell in love like immediately oh I was God. like I can only imagine yeah. at it, that age being exposed to that 15 years old yeah. Yeah. yeah and like you know some people would say that's fucking way too young to be like doing that kind of shit but like fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> no probably not us yeah. or like most of the people I listening to judge. this yeah 100 yeah, percent like we're all judge. nightlife and yeah. like you know life is just life like some people yeah. Um, get into that kind of stuff a lot younger and yeah. whatever for me it was 15 and that was like yeah I, I went out since I started going out not to interrupt but I was yeah, yeah party. I was going clubbing since I was 14 oh, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go as well. My, I, I had yeah. a mustache and I was six feet tall so <laughs> I didn't get into most places I was six foot yeah. I sure as hell didn't have a mustache they, they didn't they didn't double yeah. ID back then so yeah. if you looked old they just let you in if yeah you looked old enough so I just somebody. dress up and I'd go yeah. and then I had the ad other advantage of uh my cousin was uh, one of the owners and promoters of a lot of clubs in Vancouver. So I just go, mm -hmm. just go in whenever he wants. He said, oh yeah, you're on guest list. And they just don't even check. Yeah. If you're on guest list, they don't even check. No. So I was friends with a couple day. of the bouncers there. Yeah. Oh, there you and go. And I, I told them I was 16, so they never checked my ID. Yeah. And then on my 16th birthday, I went there to party with all my friends. And, and they were like, oh, ID? how old are you turning? And I was like, 16. And they are like, you mm -hmm. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> Well, you can't do anything yeah. now. So. Yeah. Oh, Besties, man. Right? <laughs> but that place was awesome. And it yeah. was like, yeah. that was back when um, like ecstasy was really popular. Yeah. Yeah, and it was sure. like good. Yeah. Because I, I think that it was just like probably like speed. But like our. I mean, if it's getting all the way to Victoria and people are consuming it. And it was, yeah, it well, was it was, back then. It was usually so... a combination of MDMA and MDA and sometimes an amphetamine, sometimes yeah. a hallucinogen. And fentanyl sometimes didn't really both. exist back then. Yeah. No, they weren't really putting downers in them, but they definitely wanted to yeah. change your perception. So sometimes there'd be a little right. acid in it or a little bit of like 2C whatever. <laughs> that Ooh. makes a yeah. lot of sense. Because yeah. yeah, it was like yeah. a lot different than just For sure. pure Molly yeah. is now. Yeah. Much, yeah. much different. So we were yeah. up till five in the morning. Yeah. So that, those, you know, those two things pair together, like the kind of ecstasy culture and like the, just the the real rave yeah. experience like it was like mm -hmm. maybe the size of like um what's like a small club in town like like, like the back room of like mia maybe oh, right, no yeah. bigger bigger than that i would say yeah. like bit full room of mia yeah. um just like in a perfect so like 200 square. people max right. yeah 200 thing. people and so it was yeah. like you know like walls ceiling would be like dripping by the end yeah. of the night like it was just true and right. it was all fucking like yeah. dubstep and like yeah. it was um yeah that's actually something else i want to touch yeah. on it's yeah. just like how crazy my music preferences have changed and like mm -hmm. how they've kind of yeah. like it's all cyclical with popular genres I yeah. find like yeah. back then for example I was like insane about dubstep like I yeah. found an old poster from Sunset Rooms they, they had posters every weekend and mm -hmm. like yeah. I can still think back to oh, like these guys are killing it, some oh, of the posters yeah, and it like it brings me back to mm -hmm. like that moment yeah. where I was like I get hyped and I like you know the hair kind of stands mm -hmm. on my yeah. arm from like thinking about you know the the drugs but also like the experience yeah, yeah, sure. it was just yeah. a whole thing and like yeah. um and the people the, the that's honestly that's like the biggest thing is uh and i'll circle back to that is like yeah. the the sense of community and like love mm -hmm. that i experienced hanging out with all these like 
some of them were like full on street kids. Some of them were like, just like me where I didn't really feel like I fit in and everything mm-hmm. in between and outside of that. And it just like, it did none of that fucking mattered. Yeah. Literally none yeah. of that mattered. And that's why I just finally felt like I was. That is the best like, part about rave culture. festival culture. Yeah. Is this, yeah. It's just, it's the great equalizer. It really is yeah. because yeah. it doesn't matter where you come from, where you're going, who you are matters, what's on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you find your community of like the people who have always been either judged or, un, you mm-hmm. know, misinformed. Not misinformed. What's the word I'm thinking of? Just a little bit on the outside, yeah. you know, outside of society and you all band together. Mm-hmm. I mean, mainstream party culture has always been very not classist i guess but statisist you mm. know like who's popular who's not who's cool who isn't who's throwing the know? party who's yeah. house are we going yeah, to yeah. today who's got the biggest it bank was, account yeah to so like you booze. know when i went because when i was going out at your age i love saying that <laughs> How old uh, are you? it was again like the mainstream party scene so yeah. it's like you know i'm just a kid in high school i got no money i've gotten you know nothing like nothing. my my yeah. status was because i was I, my because my cousin mm-hmm. it's like oh you're your your Rob's cousin, sweet, blah blah yeah. blah. But like everybody's like in their twenties, and I'm like this sixteen year old shithead. <laughs> so like you know, but yeah. I but I but I love the music. That's what I was there for. So me yeah. for me, a good night out was is the DJ good? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when you go to a hip hop club, rarely do you have a good night. One mm-hmm. in twenty, mm-hmm. to be honest. Really? One in twenty. Yeah. Yeah, because like I mean, they're playing pop hip hop, mm-hmm. not like good hip hop. Yeah, right. you know, and it's just you're like, not there to analyze the lyrics and feel the people want to get feelings. drunk and have sex. a lot of attitude, a lot yeah. of attitude, a lot of attitude, yeah, a lot of peacocking, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's all about right. like posturing. There's a lot of posturing. There's a lot yeah. of like, yeah. So it's definitely a different scene. I I, I miss the rave culture when I was younger. I, mm-hmm. I never was I never was exposed to it as a teenager. Yeah. I probably didn't really even exist in Vancouver when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. And then in my early twenties, I was just so close headed about the music. Every opportunity I had to get involved because I had so many great friends in the scene, like Alia, Greg C, Azim mm-hmm. Varani, uh, like yes. uh, the list goes on and on. These guys now. were like big time in the rave scene, and they were like, "Come to this, come to this." Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> and like, if I could turn back time, I would go to every single one of those parties. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. You know, and that whole like, uh, yeah, yeah, that whole uh, ecstasy period, I completely missed that. Oh. You know, the first time I ever tried uh, Molly. Um, was when it was Molly. Mm-hmm. That was it. Yeah. You know, oh, and, and that was a very short period of my time, yeah. my life. So I would say like seven years ago, I yeah. had mo- uh, ecstasy. Mm-hmm. That was a press cap from seven years prior to that. Right. Some yeah. Antique Best. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The vintage. The vintage. You know? Yeah. Vintage. <laughs> some Wolf oh, this is some 2007. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Yeah. Lemon type shit. Yeah. yeah. But that was from like what 2010, but even before that, yeah. I'm sure mm-hmm. it was better. But, yeah, and it, like it's yeah. you know and. Uh, uh, like I was saying before, I don't need to like make it that much about the drugs. It's just yeah. like they were like in a a very integral part of it, I think, because it really yeah. like speaking about the the community feel and like the love. It's just like being on drugs out all night with all these people that like you know, but in like a very mm-hmm. stripped down way. Like mm-hmm. when you're and we did like bush raves too. Yeah. Yeah. Like we yeah. we'd fucking my buddy rented a U-Haul one time, mm-hmm. and we drove out all the equipment. And all the people mm-hmm. in the back of the U-Haul. Oh, wow. yeah. And like, that's not safe. But like, we were like 16. We didn't give a fuck. And so out there, it was fine. This and is then, why they don't yeah. rent to 16-year-olds anymore. Like, <laughs> and then the way back, oh, we had a couple yeah, older yeah. friends who, yeah, you know, yeah. would uh, have their licenses. Um, but on the yeah. way back, we're all, you know, we, we've been up all night. We were mm-hmm. like partying hard. And on the way back, we're just like, we're, we're absolutely bare, right? Yeah. Our our whatever our brains are fried but like there's something there was something beautiful in that where like we'd always say like oh we had like heart to hearts and Mm -hmm. stuff like that it's like that kind of stuff um I don't know it didn't like sometimes when I think about it I'm like oh was that fake or was it just like you know whatever because of these Mm -hmm. drugs but then I think about it it's like it's you know it's not like I feel like being stripped down being being through this crazy bush rave Mm -hmm. in the back of U-Haul you like it bonds you with people Mm -hmm. you fucking hug generators out there like it's a whole yeah it's a whole (laughs) thing well, well, it's uh, either you go to, you know, band camp when you're young or you go yeah. to a bush rave. Yeah. And also, too, it's like, I do understand what people say about, like, oh, party friends aren't real. But at the same time, if it's real to you and if mm-hmm. it's real to somebody else, like, no matter what kind of circumstances are kind of going on, whether you're on drugs, off drugs, like, if this connection that you still had, I still feel is real, whether or not you can, you 
go forward in life with that person or whatnot, or if it mm -hmm. stays in that kind of circle of friends. Yeah. It's the same thing with tennis. You have a tennis friend. You <laughs> I connect love tennis. over tennis. <laughs> it's my yeah, favorite they're sport. They're not going right? to help you move, but whatever. They're not going to help you move. Yeah. Tennis is my favorite sport. That's I love tennis. Yeah. 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 I just recently got into it. Sick. Okay, we'll talk after this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing but. with the thing is, as somebody who grew up very anti drug, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's interesting. The first time I ever tried Molly was a life-changing experience. And it mm -hmm. taught me how to be open in a way that I never was. Mm -hmm. And that I took that lesson into the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Changed my life. And yeah. I feel like that's the case with just about anybody who tries it for the first time is that if you can really if you really pay attention to how what it's doing to you and how your brain is operating in that state, mm -hmm. which for me was again so profound like i mean it's I, I, again i could talk for 20 hours straight about my first time it, it was absolutely life changing i was experience. on a swing set that shit was awesome Whoa. it was yeah. sick yeah. Yeah. so <laughs> was like, but the thing it does yeah. is and and i've i've been with people who've done it for the first time many times and it's a very beautiful experience to share with somebody mm -hmm. but it's it it teaches you an openness that most people don't have mm. you know mm -hmm. yeah. without like doing a lot of self work at that you, young it's age, it's hard. Of 15 you, re you really won't, when, you know. Like, no. well, you don't even know what you're missing. Yeah, you don't know. And what I, you I don't definitely know. do not recommend anybody do it before they're 25. Mm -hmm. Do not do it before you're 25. Don't do drugs. <laughs> just don't do it before you're 25. I know I'm talking about it a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just young. because we've done it doesn't mean don't. I mean, <laughs> the doctors. first time I did it, I was 30. So, <laughs> thank you. you. And I'm 30 but, now, and I yeah. fucking never do them anymore. I yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't like and that's it. the thing is, it's it's not a it's not a completely benevolent uh, substance. So mm. be very careful when you do these things. This is not a disclaimer. This is personal experience. <laughs> you know, we already talked about things that disclaimers won't help us with. So no. there you go. But don't do it before you're 25. But no. after 25, highly recommend doing it once. Yeah, not legal advice. <laughs> yeah. It's a good disclaimer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> once, maybe twice. But Uno yeah. momento. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, but so yeah. Then, yeah. Just going from there. Yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff was just, you know, that, that really cut my teeth on um, the scene. Mm -hmm. Really, really the scene. And then I, I started DJing, as you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then everybody started DJing. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, it's not that cool to DJ anymore. Mm -hmm. So I kind of stopped. But there was a couple of years there where I had a lot of fun. I had a Tractor S4. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a four channel. Never used the extra two channels. Didn't yeah. know how to do it. So <laughs> it was like two channels for me. Yeah. Didn't really learn how to... Uh, DJ very well. Okay. I would always play like the same kind of sets. Um, mm -hmm. Electro mm -hmm. House, 128 mm -hmm. BPM, a lot of the same songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not super proud of that, but uh, you know, whatever. I was like Sorry. 17 by that point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, favorite. exactly. Yeah. But I kind of knew. I was like, I feel like I'm not really like get it. I loved DJing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Me and my buddy would always like have some drinks and make some like rum and cokes and just like DJ all night. Yeah. And it was yeah. the best thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. And then um, I, uh, yeah, everybody kind of like started doing it, and that that's when I was just like, oh no, I don't want to like, I don't want to do like it that, anymore. Right? Ooh, yeah. but like <laughs> yeah. those experiences that I had, like they instilled in me like a, a fire and a passion for music that mm. never went away. It just kind of was subdued for a bit while mm. I like I finished high school with a very very different. Uh, level of confidence and element yeah. and everything yeah. massively like I looked at the jocks like and the, the jocks started doing fucking molly at the, yeah, at the sure. dances by, by the time up, yeah by the time we're all in grade 12 and so they were like yeah. oh well you're kind of cool and I'm just like yeah. oh fuck you guys yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. um yeah. so I uh, I finished high school with like a really a, a new level of confidence yeah mm -hmm. um and then after high school I uh fuck this is another crazy story I actually had a job uh trimming weed in California mm. for oh, wow. okay. a couple of years so that's kind of what I did just like I would fly down there and I would trim weed and I would fly back and mm -hmm. I would uh that's that kind of funded the like first few years of my early 20s honestly yeah. so I, I went to Europe a couple of times with some buddies and this whole time I wasn't really um, making music I hadn't learned to produce mm -hmm. anything back then mm -hmm. it was still kind of one of those like ethereal things like I had mm -hmm. some buddies who I used to party with who used 
maybe Ableton, maybe FL. I have no idea, mm-hmm. but yeah. I would look at them and I'd be like, are you DJing? They're like, fuck no, like, get, yeah. go away, this isn't for you. And I'm DJing's like, for losers, <laughs> you beyond that. So the production still had this yeah. v- very, very yeah. big air of mystique to it. I was yeah. like, it it's just- not accessible. Yeah, not that, accessible. You no, know, not, I would say in the last couple of years it has been, but yeah. before that, mm-mm, type yeah. lips. I know, yeah. so that, but it was, there, there was still that that latent fire where I was just like, mm-hmm. I need to do this, but I I just don't know how. And DJing wasn't really on my... I wanted to just live. I wanted to get yeah. some some life experience. And I did. I had a great time. I yeah. you know, I had a couple odd jobs. I had a lot of odd jobs, actually. A lot of retail. I used to work at like Radio Shack and like Best Buy and yeah. fucking mm-hmm. all that stuff. And then um, yeah. I think it was probably... Okay, so 2017 was... Seven years ago? No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Five, six, seven. Yeah, seven uh, years yeah. ago. <laughs> so yeah, I was like yeah, 23. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I can do math sometimes. Uh, so okay. <laughs> I was like, when are we working? We're good at English. <laughs> it's fine. So 23, I um, I hung out with one of my friends, and she's actually like in not in any scene in the city that I've been a part of. I haven't seen her around, but her name is... Um, Fuck, I forget her real name, but like her mm. her artist name is Deathly Chill. Okay. Um, I can't remember Rings her real name. Rings a tiny little bell. Yeah, and she's me. like, no. she's lived, she's been doing this shit for like a while, okay. and I think I went to high school with her. She's like one of those friends that like you know you've you've known since high school, but like you didn't really like mm. know each other personally. But yeah. we DM'd a little bit because I saw her doing stuff out here, and I was like, hey, I messaged her one day when I was like twenty three, and I was like how did you get into the scene in Vancouver? And she's like, mm-hmm. I went to this school called Nimbus. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh shit, like, what is that? And she's like, it's a music institute. They do like audio engineering and music production and all this stuff. And I was like, that's dope. Like that's, yes. yeah. that's fucking awesome. I've never heard of that. No, Nimbus? I Nimbus? No. no. Still around? Uh, no, I'll, okay. I'll circle back on that sure, one. Because Nimbus yeah. is a, a yeah. big, that's like, that's basically like what I'm, yeah. yeah about yeah. to describe but i'll, yeah. I'll save the, yeah, the finishing for sure, the end sure, of it because sure, sure. it's yeah. yeah it's a anyways um okay so <laughs> yeah. uh she was like it's twenty four thousand dollars and i was yeah. like oh for for like four years she's like no for like a year program and i'm like wow. okay great that's fucking uh yeah. probably can't afford that with that's these like zero dollar yeah, like savings school, account yeah, yeah, yeah. um so i Wait, i so like two four zero zero is zero 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 with a comma yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty four thousand. yeah 24 yeah comma, zero 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so i was like shit um yeah. i'll try to do it on my own yeah so i yeah. i saved up some the money school from... of youtube is <laughs> yeah 20 dollar a month internet or whatever the hell it yeah, is no. so i saved up some money yeah. i got i actually like bought Ableton mm-hmm. I bought like some HS8s I like I set up a studio in my buddy's uh, apartment I was living with at the time he was actually a producer mm-hmm. um, but he was also a huge stoner and just like every oh, yeah. time we would sit down to like try to work he'd just be like uh, let's just play Halo instead and I'm like <sighs> okay yeah sure because like me i this is the thing with me like seven years ago i did not have i had the passion but i didn't have the the drive or the Mm -hmm. motivation i didn't have the self-discipline i had none of that and so i wanted it so badly but i just it was a it's and it's been a struggle for me for my whole life and i'm only now just taking strides to overcome that so lack of self-discipline yeah. and i am doing it but yeah back then it was lifelong just like journey my man lifelong yes. journey no, it's self-growth yeah. right yeah. it is yeah. self-growth so that was um it was difficult for me because i wanted it so badly but mm-hmm. i would open up ableton i'd be like i don't know how this works like i'll maybe watch a mm-hmm. youtube video and i was yeah. like well i'm not getting it right away so like fuck this you yeah. know yeah. Yeah. um oh, which so common yeah, everybody's done that yeah. Yeah. yeah and it sucked and so i i saved up some money from california and i i got some help from my parents bless them Mm-hmm. Bless. If you're watching, Shout out parents. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. thankful for that that I had the opportunity to you know have support like that mm-hmm. um, because they I paid for half, they paid for the other half. I moved to Vancouver in a U-Haul. Uh, I have an uncle who lives in North Ann, mm-hmm. who lives in Pitt Meadows now. But that was the only yeah. person I knew uh-huh. yeah. in Vancouver. Yeah, Not a crazy. Person. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, so I moved here in a U-Haul with my tuition paid and, and an apartment with uh, my friend Jason, who's actually the manager at the the bike shop that I just got a job. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah which yes. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, me and him have been best friends ever since. And But back then, we didn't know each other. So yeah. Jason was a guy who moved to from Abbotsford to go to Nimbus. I moved from Victoria to go to Nimbus. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I learned how to create. I learned how to make music over the course of a year. 
My, wow. I learned audio engineering. I learned uh, mixing. I learned <laughs> creativity, which is mm -hmm. like crazy because that's not an easy thing to teach. Okay. Yeah, but that's I, very true. I had an incredible teacher named Garth Flitcher. Cool. Shout out. I'll probably send Shout him this, this as well. Yeah, I definitely yeah. will. Yeah. He's teaching uh, privately now. And I think he might actually work at SAE as well, which Ooh. is awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, this guy was like up. this yeah. guy was like I'll mad <laughs> yo this guy was like mad fucking scientist like mm. roger swan was my engineering teacher he was like very very uh technical very good at what he does like an og mm -hmm. uh, a lot of hip-hop produ records produced oh yeah mixed. cool awesome yeah. introduction uh so nimbus was split into three terms so first term was engineering that was roger swan second term was uh production with garth Fletcher, Fletch, mm -hmm. the Fletch man yeah uh he was just like yeah mad scientist like fucking mad genius so uh amazing like just the the best possible person you could yeah. hope for to teach you creation oh yeah i'm yeah. um, so happy and bubbly and like wow like crazy like fucking yeah, he reminds me of awesome. my physics teacher yeah. yeah my physics teacher was like that you find a good teacher like that they <laughs> yeah. change your life yeah. i swear it was amazing yeah. it was fucking amazing he had just enough of like a you know a, a rope around us to like guide us in the right way yeah. while like totally letting the reins off and just yeah. like letting us explore it ourselves yeah. And then um, my EDM teacher for the last term, we got to choose our elective at the end. So they had like uh, post and game audio for film. They had mm. like live sound. They had an artist development course. I always knew I was going into EDM yeah. mm -hmm. at the end of it. And so I did that with uh, the same cohort. It was eight guys, uh, no, a couple girls actually. Yeah. All the guys did EDM though. The, the yeah. girls yeah. went into other stuff, but um, we went into EDM the last term and Spencer Reed, Tails, he goes yeah. by, oh, yeah. was my Tails. teacher for that. Yeah. No way. Couldn't have asked for a better yeah. fucking teacher for EDM, yeah. yeah. like yeah. honestly. So funny. Yeah. We yeah. lucked out like crazy. He's actually yeah. low key great sound designer, producer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's yeah. he's incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is incredible. Yeah. Shout out to you as well, my man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep, he was such a such a G, such a pleasant guy to be around and like there are like teaching I, I teach as well um mm -hmm. now and I'll mm -hmm. definitely move into that after yeah. this. But yeah. uh yeah, there aren't like what what separates a really good teacher from a, a mediocre teacher is like somebody who can distill high level concepts um, mm -hmm. into something that beginners mm -hmm. can understand mm -hmm. and implement. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Tails did that while making it fun yeah. and being a dope guy mm -hmm. and just like yeah, making the experience incredible. So my time at Nimbus was amazing. So worth mm -hmm. it, you'd say. 24 grand, but worth it. It was fucking worth it. I don't yeah. give a shit. I was yeah. in debt for like a few years after. I don't yeah. give a fuck. I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah, it was sure. so worth it. I'm still yeah. I'm still tight as hell with everybody who yeah. I went to school with. Mm -hmm. They're all still like my, my close friends, especially Jason. We, yeah. we were roommates twice after that for like yeah. almost five years in total. So yeah, it was incredible. Um, amazing. Thing. Yeah. So thinking about the program as a whole, just taking a couple key elements out of that, what were your kind of biggest learning lessons? What were some big challenges, biggest learning lessons? The first one was moving to a city where I didn't know anybody mm -hmm. um, and learning something that I didn't know how to do at all. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big life shift yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, I you think, come from like a little small town, yeah. you raised close-knit type group of yeah. people. Yeah. I can still remember my first day I was standing outside of the building and I was just like looking up at the at the like buzzer and I was just like rang it and they're like, hey, and I'm like, it's my first day. And I'm like 23, you know, I'm not like yeah. a little kid, but I'm just like, hey. Yeah. I'm new here. You feel like a new kid for sure. Yeah. 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 So I think a big takeaway, because obviously like, you know, I've talked about how music has mm -hmm. affected me and how the the learning experience affected me. Um, I feel like that is like a good segue into like the start of my journey with like personal growth and like mm -hmm. spirituality a little bit, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. this is another thing that I didn't really think of while it was happening but now in retrospect i'm like yeah this was probably like a big like yeah the little building growing. Blocks, yeah turning point yeah, yeah because it was hard it was really difficult i've always had pretty good like force of will and like mental fortitude not trying to like suck my own dick but mm -hmm. i'm just like that's yeah. me <laughs> like yeah. i'm good at like you know barreling through stuff but this was kind of different where i was like i can't just force it like i have to like feel it out kind of and feeling it out as in just like you know dealing with deadlines and dealing with yeah. maybe not feeling comfortable with like a lot of these people who I didn't know super well yet mm -hmm. and like dealing with projects and learning all this new stuff being in a city but I 
yeah, I really liked it. I mm. really liked it. And um, it was stressful as hell, but that kind of stress is like what molds you. And yeah, it's good you. stress. It yeah, it's yeah. good stress. Yeah. And so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like meditate or like journal or anything back then, but I just started taking time for myself and like, I don't know, just, um, I started listening to like lo-fi hip hop streams yeah. Yeah. actually. Yeah. Lo-fi hip hop 24-7 yeah. beats to study and relax to that shit yeah. was on like yeah. 24-7. Like, kind of yeah. Just like a meditation in the yeah, background. Right? Just, like, yeah, right. Level you out throughout yeah. the chaos a little bit. Right? And like setting a space like how you guys do, you know? Like yeah. I always have lights in my room right now and like um, for ever since then, like I'm building mm. a studio in my my apartment right now. Because nice. uh, my roommate just moved out, and I'm just like I'm really like intentionally like placing everything, and like mm -hmm. yeah, that kind of stuff was just. Um, my mom was really spiritual, mm -hmm. uh, but I kind of went against that growing mm -hmm. up. And, As you do, yeah, yeah. And now I'm just like I'm really like learning all these things. That's really. a that's a that's a thing it. with yeah. turning thirty is you're like wait my parents were right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't all smooth sailing. Yeah. After Nimbus, I uh, I was pretty burnt out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I moved back to the island. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. which I think was it was a mistake for sure. Mm -hmm. I should have just taken a, a trip somewhere for a couple of weeks and stayed yeah. in the city because yeah. that was when I was 23 mm -hmm. right I'm 30 now mm -hmm. what I really wanted to do was carry that momentum because yeah. as I'm sure you guys know like momentum is like it's, it's the most fucking huge. important especially thing ever especially for Vancouver once you get one opportunity or yeah. one friend then you just gotta keep going yeah. as fast and as I, can. I killed it not in the yeah. good way yeah. I, I stalled myself massively mm -hmm. I, I went back to Victoria um, and I was there for like a couple weeks mm -hmm. until I was like fuck yeah. <laughs> shit Gotta go back. i should have stayed in vancouver yeah. um i'm Kept broke apartment. Yeah. yeah i'm broke yeah. as fuck right now um so i'm just gonna work i got a job at like a flooring wholesaler like driving a forklift and like throwing out around bags of concrete and i just i was like this does not feel like me yeah. this is not me at all but yeah. like i i you know i don't have money i, yeah. I can't i can't move yeah. back yeah. i wasn't like gonna get into the the scene in victoria really because i just i didn't feel like i was there mentally and i also just you probably yeah. set your roots down if you just, just yeah exactly yeah. oh like exactly Vancouver with Nimbus and all this stuff yeah. you know there is a future is kind of in yeah the 2017 city. too was yeah. yeah I mean or I guess this would have been maybe 2018 by mm -hmm. that point yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah I mean the scene was decent here for sure not the way it is now but it was definitely yeah. decent for sure yeah it was it was there, trap it was, was big. big yeah, yeah. trap <laughs> was big I mean, music in general wasn't at its <laughs> apex at that point but it was yeah. definitely like you know the party scene was going here there's a lot of mm -hmm. shows and stuff for sure yeah. yeah but before we leave nimbus yeah, though, i yeah. do want to talk a little bit more about that and like the learnings that you kind of like took away from it too because yeah. you mentioned how hard it was and all the struggles but what were some of the things that kale left you with that mm. kind of really surprised you uh good question um probably just like creating music that you like mm -hmm. <laughs> creating music that you like because when you're just learning how to make music you're just making whatever right yeah. sounds yeah yeah you're making sounds and yeah. like i Putting stuff together yeah so yeah. i'd always make like hip hop hip hop beats because that's mm. kind of like what him and a lot of other people made in, in class but that that wasn't really like I never had a desire to finish a hip hop beat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I say hip hop, I mean like yeah. my, cause I'm very EDM. I, I mean like yeah. a, a drum, a yeah. hip hop drum beat with yeah. like, you know, some EDM synths or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I always had a bit of EDM, but I never really felt like finishing it. Mm -hmm. um, the couple house tracks, like a couple four, four on the floor tracks I made, I would be like, yeah, this is like what I want to make. But mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I would always have trouble finishing it. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, the, a struggle for me that kind of stayed with me for a fucking, a long time until very recently mm -hmm. um, was making stuff that I liked and just mm -hmm. finishing it. I would always swap genres mm -hmm. for years, like not just at Nimbus, but for years after mm -hmm. that. And I didn't really figure out that like one, it doesn't matter that much. And two, like, like it does matter, like focus in on a couple mm -hmm. things, but also like don't put too much pressure on yourself to like only make a couple different things. Cause mm -hmm. It's way, and this is like a much bigger topic that I would yeah. like. I would love to speak further on as well because yeah. this is like a huge yeah. part of like well, my favorite my producer yeah. is Zoo. Mm. Oh, yo, me too. That was what, the second fucking what, EDM what, album. What what, what genre is he? Yeah, 
Yeah, he's like I, no I, I saw I no. saw someone he make have a, a genre. I saw someone on Reddit the other day yeah. say he's like sexy LA house. Like LA house. I'm he's like, so, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. He has maybe four house tracks. <laughs> maybe. Generation Y is my favorite album it's by unreal. him. It's unreal. Yeah. Um, unreal. It's fucking yeah. incredible. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah no, but Zoo is like there's no he he doesn't have a genre. Like, I love and, like if you go to a blacklist set, mm-hmm. he plays like mostly like progressive and tech house. Yeah. But it's all remixes from other producers of his mm. tracks. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that's what he's playing. He's not playing yeah. his bass tracks. Oh, so when you go to, like, he's got two kinds of shows. He's got a blacklist set. He's yep. got a regular show. His regular yeah. show, he's, like, live. He's singing. He's playing. He's got mm-hmm. his band, all that stuff. He's yeah. playing his tracks. But if you go to a blacklist set, then he's playing house. So he's one of my favorite artists of all time. Of all time, for of sure. All yeah. time. He's, like, like it's... multi-talented, like, falsetto. I say this in my I... video. A falsetto <laughs> to die for. But it's true. Like, it's mm-hmm. so good. And, yeah, he would love him like yeah, yeah. absolutely i call him the modern yeah. day prince yeah. i wouldn't say he's as good as prince or as talented, but he's right there that's mm-hmm. really funny Literally that you right say there. that because i like i fucking love zoo like so much yeah. and like whenever i probably just spend too much time on reddit everybody mm-hmm. complains on reddit because yeah. i've seen so many reddit comments when people talk about zoo and like the edm subreddit yeah. that like yeah. Oh, he's like overrated, or is like he sucks at singing. And I'm just like, I saw him at yeah. Harbor like a few months ago, and I was like, one of the this best, is like one of the best ever been fucking to. shows I've ever it's been one to. Of the best shows yeah. I've ever like, been to. what are you guys talking about? Yeah. Everybody's a fucking critic. Like, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm learning. Like, you know, just yeah. like the people who are doing it are doing it, yeah. and the people who aren't aren't. Like, no, oh, just dis- no disrespect <laughs> to anybody, but like, if you're not doing it, like, you don't need to hate. Yeah. Yeah. Just like shut the fuck up, you know. Like, yeah, you it's not for you. Move on. Find yeah. something you like. Yeah, that yeah. and yeah. mainstream news. I don't listen or yeah. talk to a lot the of news, people. Media. <laughs> you know, and it's just like when you put your head down and focus on the things that you love and you love doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I feel like that just returns so much more because you're putting stuff into what you love either the music or the vibes or like whatever you're listening to and then it comes back to you because mm-hmm. you love it so much and you're just like that kind of goes into like i'm all about positivity yeah and that's just like yeah why would you put out like negative energy mm-hmm. if you can help it like yeah. seriously yeah. <laughs> like it's not that complicated but yeah. it's yeah. prevalent it's good to break things down and take it apart and analyze things and i really enjoy doing that mm-hmm. but i'm like the the guys on the, the people that you're finding on message boards are that that's just spew out hate or just doing it because that's the easiest thing for them to do and get a Let's reaction out of it. Doesn't it's get true. There. Yeah. Bye. No, put kidding. us no put us on Reddit. If we're on oh. Reddit, that means we've made it. Oh. Yeah. If we're on Reddit, that means we've made it. Okay, we're we're well, killing it. We're tempting the devil yeah. here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, I totally understand that. Yeah. And also, like, making what you love, too, is, like, so hard. Yeah. And, you Finding know. your authentic sound and, mm-hmm. roll, you know, com- you know, uh, following through with that yeah. and all that stuff. And knowing how to do that. I mean, that's the thing with learning the technicals is just so you have a baseline of taking mm-hmm. what's up here and putting it on there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I, I would have, no, I would not that I even think musically, which is crazy because i'm so obsessed with it but Mm -hmm. i don't think about new sounds to make Mm -hmm. you know i don't Mm -hmm. that does not that's not how my brain works so for me production is it does not seem like something i would ever really get into because i'm not like thinking oh what if i lay this down and put this here and (laughs) single that i'm not thinking that at all (laughs) literally not at all i don't know i don't know because my brain doesn't really think like that either sometimes i'll think of little melodies and stuff like that but a lot of the times when i'm producing and like yeah. i say that very lightly because i'm still there no nah, no nah, you say it you say that with force Pro- girl yeah. producing <laughs> you know try to make something i'll hear it in the mix i'll hear yeah. it i'll hear oh i can hear that little sound and then i create it out of that like mm. it's already kind mm-hmm. of present yeah and then you just kind of mold it that's yeah. how i feel it's like, like taking clippings it. off a plant Ooh, i'll take a little yeah, of that yeah. and grow it into it's something like else. making a bouquet <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love bouquets <laughs> <laughs> but you've said that recently you've learned how to make stuff that you've loved yeah what was that transition what was that learning for you how did you find that um probably just in the last few months actually mm. yeah the last few months so I'll, yeah yeah we're getting pretty close to the, the present honestly mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. it's cr- kind of crazy to summarize like mm-hmm. all that um in a, like 45 minutes or whatever <laughs> yeah. it's totally crazy yeah. um but uh i came here with the intent to do that so yeah. i you know yeah. paraphrased it a little bit but um yeah so after nimbus Victoria for like eight months. As soon as I had money, I was back here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I moved in with a buddy in East Fan. Mm-hmm. Made music a bit. Like yeah. I, I produced some stuff, but it was still just like, yeah, I was making 
whatever. I was mm -hmm. making songs that I was like, I know these aren't mixed that great. Not that that matters that mm -hmm. much, but mm -hmm. I was still just like, I knew my limits and I knew I wasn't really um, moving forward that much, but I was having fun with it. I was having fun yeah. with it. I was single. I was just like playing video games, fucking mm -hmm. going yeah. out, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, but I always, always in the back of my mind, I was just like, no, I like, I want this. Mm -hmm. And like the, the, this has changed a lot back then. It was like, you know, I want to be famous. I want to DJ across mm -hmm. the world. I want people to know me. And now it's much more just like, I want to be able to support myself doing what I love. Yeah. And yeah, I want people to hear my music. Every mm -hmm. artist does. But mm -hmm. even like saying, those words like only in the past year have I really uh realized that that is not um egotistical mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. not wrong it's just yeah. like as an artist you want to create and you want to have you know some people don't want other people to hear their stuff yeah mm -hmm. it's totally fine yeah. me yeah. and like a lot of the people I surround myself with self with like they they do and that's mm -hmm. okay but so yeah in the past year couple of years I've really um worked on personal growth a lot like actively mm -hmm. and that's like a lot of like journaling a lot of like mindfulness and like walking and just like like even on the way here I was like I had a few minutes extra so I like sat by the water and just like I mean that's mm -hmm. beautiful the sun mm -hmm. like on yeah. the water oh, yeah. so I love it yeah. um I live in Kitsilano too in a basement suite don't at me I'm not fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much light no, in my room yeah. um but yeah, yeah no, I um I met up my beautiful girlfriend Chanel um as well and just like yeah worked on myself a lot and like being more gentle with myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and once I started to do that I really started to um think more seriously about music and like because I feel like I had to get to that point emotionally mm -hmm. um, like I've always been very sensitive and like very empathetic and just like that's great but it's also difficult mm -hmm. <laughs> really difficult yeah. sometimes so yeah, I, I was hard and I was hard on myself. I was so yeah. hard on myself. And like that kind of pressure is good sometimes, but a lot of the time it's not good, especially for creative pursuits. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it, I would say in the past year, well, in the, okay, so <laughs> mm -hmm. I quit my job in, yeah. last <laughs> August. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, w I was working construction. So for these couple of years, since I met my girlfriend, I was doing better. I was working a construction job from like 2021 to 2023. Um, and then I, uh, I I started to feel like I wanted to do music mm -hmm. again, like more, like, yeah. act, like really do it professionally, yeah. really, really yeah. do it. Get in the scene, network, uh, you know, try to find like my sound or whatever, just do it more. Mm -hmm. um, but I was really having a hard time um, balancing it with work. And not just because, you know, like we can do, a mm -hmm. nine to five and still yeah. make music but it was the construction stuff specifically it was like mm. just felt very jarring to like my my spirit um yeah i mean you're going did, very you're... physical task oriented yeah going, and oh. the people there yeah, are people just are anti-social sure. and like don't want to be there you, you yeah. that that's that's an environment where on their lunch break you want to probably drop a molly 100 <laughs> percent. seriously like open their brains they oh my like god it. they'd say stuff <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. here yeah. look at this fucking mushroom tapestry isn't that theoretically cool? <laughs> yeah. i don't actually recommend doing that legally i love the disclaimer no, yeah legal. it's good to have it's Absolutely good to have not. yeah You're but no but seriously though <laughs> like yeah. a yeah. little bit of molly would do those guys a lot of good um, <laughs> at the end of a lunch break they'd say stuff like all right time to fucking get back to paradise you know yeah. like being like this fucking sucks and yeah. i'm just like are you going to make a change about it? And yeah. they're like, no, this is just my life. And I'm yeah. like, fuck that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I am not going to do that. And I've always known that I wasn't going to like do that forever, but it's yeah. like, it's hard when you're in that system. It's you sure. need money. You're yeah. making and 35 like, bucks an hour. Or whatever, yeah. And it's like pretty yeah. decent. Okay. So it's like, yeah. what am I supposed to do? But no, I, I, I started to build um, a little bit of a network for, uh, for teaching. Mm -hmm. Now that was the first step I did. I, yeah. I, I was like, I've been producing for long enough. You know, I had to tell myself that like, I could do it. I'm like, no, I know enough to teach. It's like, no, yeah. I, I knew enough to teach. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it took me a bit to be like, okay, I, I could do this. So With I the self criticism, exactly, decide, yeah, have the confidence, be able to. And once you get in there teaching, you're like, oh wait, I do know a lot. Yeah. I know yeah. way more than I think. You I actually. Do you actually learn more by teaching if you can teach you something actually you actually it's understand crazy. the concept yeah. of things yeah it's when crazy. i started teaching yeah. photography i was just like wow i can actually do this yeah and isn't it wild like, and it's and it was actually 
I've, I've always had a teaching background, like in all the jobs I've had or anything. I, one of the things you talk about is what makes a good teacher is so mm-hmm. you can take high level concepts and make them easy Very to understand. Yeah. I've always had a gift for that. That's yeah. great. All the time. Yeah. So when I decided to, well, I was actually asked to teach at mm-hmm. like, you know, like workshops and things like that. You know, I was like, I can't teach. And then I was yeah. like, wait a minute, I can teach. I'm doing this I do this all the time. I've yeah. created training courses for so many things. I've actually everything. I used to be a trainer. Like, what am I yeah. talking about? I can't. I can't. Of course, I can teach. And yeah. I mean, controversial, and, but like, yeah. also, you don't have to be at the highest level of executive. There's so many levels of yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Because even if you're in the intermediate level or whatever it yeah. is, there's still going to be someone who knows less than you. A hundred percent. You don't know? have to be a master. There aren't yeah. that many right. masters. Yeah, and, and even a lot if they of a lot of people who are masters are not they're so talented naturally they yeah. don't know how to teach that and they, they wouldn't know. even call them even if yeah. they could and yeah. they did they wouldn't even call themselves masters yeah. they're like fuck no I'm yeah. always learning I'm sure. like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, sure, yeah. right? so it's just like if you have the ability yeah. to teach that yeah. is almost separate than what you're actually teaching yeah. you know yeah so good on you thank you yeah, yeah. so I, I just started I think it was just a couple people um, mixing as well I was mm-hmm. I've always been very like I like the technical side not as much as the creative side, but I do like mm-hmm. it. So mm-hmm. I, I had a couple uh, mixing jobs, like, yeah. you know, taking stems of a track and mixing yeah. it. Um, time Geometry, mm-hmm. Jesse, she was my first client. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, City. yeah, and she reached out to me and mm-hmm. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, and so I did a little bit of that. I, I think I had like one student um, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this could be like, you know, maybe mm-hmm. like a thing. And for me, I'm, I'm, I've always, my girlfriend is not like this. She thinks I'm insane. But the way I am is I'm like, if I'm going to do something and I know I'm going to make the decision to do it, whether it's, you know, a change in scenery or a purchase or whatever, I'm like, why would I do it a month from now if I know I'm going to do it? So I just fucking yeah. do it immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that was what I did with my job. And I am, you know, I, I am like that, but I'm also like smart enough to have a little bit of a safety net. So I got yeah. a part-time job before I quit. I had mm-hmm. a part-time job lined up. I interviewed for it. Um, like a doggy daycare ended up being a total nightmare there was piss and <laughs> shit everywhere it was so some. loud i fucking Horror hated it i love dog. dogs i hated that i, oh, I quit yeah. in like two months um but yeah. anyways i had a job lined up before i yeah. quit my job in construction you tried i tried yeah. i did you i tried. did i did um i'm very much like you i'm either go hard or go home kind of yeah, yeah either we're gonna do a full-on podcast yeah, or, or yeah for the rest of my I life i love it so i get it you yeah dive right in i dove right in and um I I don't know. I just I guess I put the right energy out because I started to get more and more students and I and then I got um this one who I've been seeing month or weekly. Mm-hmm. Uh this 14-year-old named Ryan. Um cool. who I teach yeah, weekly and I've been teaching him since like September. Mm-hmm. Um lots more mixing gigs started to come in. I I did a bit of promotion, but a lot of it was just word of mouth like because mm-hmm. I I'd also started to go out to shows. Yeah. Um and started to like network. I I almost like don't even like using that word anymore. Mm-hmm. There was a big discussion about like networking and mm-hmm. like this uh Kumo chat uh, mm-hmm. a few days ago and I was just like I think a lot of people uh, spoke really well on that as to like don't even view it as networking just mm-hmm. view it as like going know, out talking fun, yeah, yeah talking, like yeah. meeting people yeah. yeah and so that's what I did I went out and met people and like the passion shines through and so yeah. I, I got a couple gigs and I was like this is amazing um and then that was another big I mean I won't go too deep into that because that was just like uh well, I could briefly. It was it was tough. It was yeah. really tough when I first quit. I thought it was yeah. going to be sunshines and rainbows. I'm like, I'm pursuing my passion. Yeah. It was fucking super it's hard. So hard. Probably one of the hardest yeah. things that I've ever gone through in my life. I like definitely got depressed for like a month. My girlfriend yeah. was in Europe too. Oh. Um, no fault of hers. She had a trip planned months in advance. Girl, live your best life. Quit, yeah. quit my job in August. <laughs> fucking started working for myself in September. Uh, she went to Europe for all of September. I had like my first club gig, like I Yay. DJed at the pit. I was yeah. awesome, but I was Very just like cool. a, a wreck after. I'm just like, yeah. there's so much build up to it. And for I was sure. just like, this is like, what the fuck am I doing after mm-hmm. that? Yeah. So it was a lot what the fuck of- am I doing good way or bad way? Oh, just like all this build up yeah. to the sh- to the gig and then it, the come down. And I was Dude, like, that was oh, exactly how, honestly- Is this what I wanted to do? <laughs> when I did my <laughs> first, first gig, gig, I did my yeah. first gig and then another gig right after that the next week. And yeah. then I almost- to this day this is like september yeah to this day i've barely touched dj mm-hmm. yeah really barely touched it i still yeah. get so nervous like yeah. i've just like yeah. i i i haven't downloaded 
I think I downloaded a little bit of music when we did the thing with Shades, which yeah. is the only time other in between that mm -hmm. that I DJed. But yeah. like it's, I haven't touched it, and it's just building up so big in my head. Oh, and no, it's like Paul. I'm like you gotta rip the bandaid off. <laughs> and it's like I'm, I'm like building this list of like I'm like tagging all these Instagram posts and shazamming all these tracks. Like I'm gonna get around to like sitting down and downloading all this music, <laughs> and it's just stacking up in my head like this insurmountable oh, mountain oh. that I'm never gonna start climbing. Oh, no. So I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, yeah, it was tough. If yeah. You I will tell you for myself, I 99% of the time I walk off stage being like, I hated that show. That was mm. awful. I did a bad job. Mm -hmm. But it's because we care so, 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 so much. Mm -hmm. And I think that's And you gig really a lot. Is. So I like, I, that's, yeah. <laughs> I do. I'm really, I'm so grateful. I love every single one. Mm -hmm. I get so excited for it. Same thing. When I'm in the moment, I'm just like, why do I hate, why do I yeah. hate? I care so much? I want yeah. it to be better every single yeah. time. And I walk off stage, I'm done. I'm done forever. The amount of times that I've turned to Dana, I'm quitting. <laughs> really? <laughs> this is it. I'm done my last gig. Well, that honestly makes me feel like <laughs> really good. Stop. Yeah. You were fine. Yeah. I'm like, but this tiny little transition from yeah. here to here. And I looked up and that person was talking to somebody else. <laughs> you know? Oh my God. So let, just don't even yeah. let that yeah. bother you as well. Like so That's, many people get on yeah. stage, hate what they do, but it's like every single time you hate you it because you love it, you, yeah. you just love it and you care for it so, so, so much. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes those lines and everything gets crossed too because yeah. then people come up to you after and be like, That was great. Yeah, that helps a lot. Part. That you helps know, a lot. This music was whatever. <laughs> I know, like when yeah. you played a purr, you're like, I fucking hate that set. I was like, That was amazing. <laughs> Like, that honestly like, makes oh, me feel God. so relieved oh but she God. was like in a, she was in a room where it was like a huge room yeah and she was like she started before doors were even open so like yeah. she's sitting there like everybody hates me nobody's uh, here well not even and i'm that, like there like, and i'm like plan. i'm like this fucking yeah. music's good like oh, here's let's go the other thing of it too it's expectations yeah. mm -hmm. i think that is one of the biggest killers oh, for sure because i have the expectation i'm gonna go in nobody's gonna be there it this is going to happen and this is going to happen when things kind of change like that mm -hmm. it's like okay well you have to take off the artist hat and put on the the analytical cap like okay well are they happy are yeah. they sad how do you feel can i interview you please like i need the wait brain, the track's all over <laughs> i need the brain validation of what's going on instead of just leading with your heart and yeah like okay well I'm just, just put out your play. authentic stuff and go and, that's what and then really you get learning. in the zone and then it just yeah. follows itself and then it just like, flows and you're yeah. just like you know transitioning from here and there and finally it feels good yeah. after yeah. a while but yeah, that was the thing when yeah. I played the second gig at uh, at Hello Goodbye that Sunday, because the first one was like we were playing house music, which I don't want to play, mm -hmm. but killed it. That's fine. You did great. Fuck you know, yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah. Then, and then and then and then I was like, that. okay, well I'm gonna go play this Hello Goodbye set, and it was an opener. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm opening set, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm playing whatever the fuck I want because I've been I've, I've planned for three months to play this fucking house set. Yeah. Trying to convince people to let well, people, Danica, to <laughs> let me play progressive. Yeah. And she wouldn't, which is no. fine. She was right, but it doesn't matter. Um, it still was grinding my gears. So I'm just going to, mm. I just went in just like fucking, I started like with Deep House, yep. built it up. Yeah. Went into progressive, went into techno, hard. Melodic techno. Then, then went back into progressive <laughs> to end it bellas. off. Yeah. And 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 I didn't care what anybody there was doing because it's a lounge. They're yeah. sitting, there's people drinking, there's people sitting, there's like a handful of people dancing. It's yeah. like whatever. Some people yeah. like it, some people don't. I didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. Then And then when I was done, the amount of insanely good feedback I got was ridiculous i heard the, it was the ridiculous. set after it was amazing I yeah loved it. It, it, people said like this is like the manager said this is the best opening set i've ever heard yeah i had the djs who were coming up next to me said that was awesome like mm -hmm. i don't know who these probably because you didn't yeah. give a fuck yeah, yeah. I, I, I did <laughs> i did zero fucks. Yeah. and then and I, I, had, I had a bunch of girls be like when's your next set when i want to come what's with your instagram i'm yeah. like it's like my instagram's photography it has nothing to do with music anyways all this so, to say don't so that's what i'm saying worry. just 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 do just what you want. That's yeah. it, just you know? what you, if you love it, somebody else is going to love it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the so key. True. That's the thing I know I mean, is that if, if you love it, somebody else is going to love it. If thing, then it isn't either too, mm -hmm. but at the same time, just doing what you love and yeah. finding yeah. that. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That makes yeah. me feel really good. And that, yeah. so that kind of stuff is like, um, 
you know, not not advice, but just mm-hmm. like a conversation where yeah. you guys just gave me like a lot of really good stuff. But like, yeah. you know, a few years ago, I might have just, I probably would have been too too blocked to yeah. accept that sure. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that's what like has really, really changed for me recently, yeah. which is like, yeah, the teaching stuff. Yeah. Like, so yes. I, I, I taught, yeah. So I, I went through like a little bit of de- depression only for mm-hmm. like a month. Um, and that's such a big change in your life too. Oh my god, yeah. That is such it was a, massive. Yeah, it was I bigger than we also went through this. I feel like I can relate so well to you because I recently went through that too. Yeah. You know, where I didn't have any work in August, and so I decided to take a couple months off. Mm-hmm. And the amount you're of like, wow, like, I get a free in, schedule, sweet. And then you're like, oh my fucking in. god. <laughs> and now I'm gonna do Twitch five days a week or <laughs> yeah. whatever it is, you yeah. know. And now I'm gonna throw myself into music and art yeah. and build as much as I can. But on the back end, being like. Yeah, everything is, and it's all you. Am I gonna eat next week? (laughs) Am I eating crackers or salmon for the third time? And it's all you. It's all you. You're you're doing you, and so like yeah, I feel so alone in those moments. I feel like yeah. So um, so it was it was tough, but then I started to, as you do, you know, build a a a stronger like mental Mm -hmm. whatever gym was working my my brain out. I'm like okay. I'm going to do this and I'm going to, I'm just going to keep doing it. And it's hard, yeah. uh, but I kept doing it. So I just kept teaching. I kept, you know, looking for any way that I could mm-hmm. to make money with mm-hmm. music. Mm-hmm. And that was going really well. And then I was like, okay, I think I'm like, I'm going to start doing the other stuff now. Mm-hmm. I can add, I can afford mentally to add more stuff on. Yeah. So I'm like, now I'll start figuring out like, a, you know, more to do with my brand. And so I started mm-hmm. to do some content. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a little bit of that in the summer. Um, and then was like got burnt out because I was working full time. Yeah. And so then I started to do it again, and then I started to like um, produce more and think about like you know a release schedule, mm-hmm. like making my own artwork again, which I love to do. Like I love mm-hmm. that kind of stuff as well. And so I um, I really like found my my rhythm um, in like January February, and uh, teaching was one of the biggest things for that Mm -hmm. teaching because like you said it's like Mm -hmm. when you start telling people stuff and they you know they ask you a question like how does compression work or like Mm -hmm. how does you know how do you make like this sound cool or like Mm -hmm. airy or spacey it's Mm -hmm. like creative or technical and then you Mm -hmm. give them an answer and you're like did i just fucking say that like Mm -hmm. damn that was pretty good and that just started happening like constantly and that's when i that is when i really really started to see a shift in my mindset towards creation and art Mm -hmm. because like a shift in mindset towards like you know a a baseline a deep house baseline is fucking whatever a shift Mm -hmm. in mindset to like how you perceive you know your creative essence and like Mm -hmm. what matters and what doesn't like some rick rubin type shit um i i love audiobooks i listen Mm -hmm. i'm like Mm -hmm. halfway through the creative act and like a lot of other like spiritual kind of art Mm -hmm. stuff like that Mm -hmm. love it helps so much um Then I was like, okay, so it like, for example, like I've always been, you know, hard with genres, narrowing Mm -hmm. down on one thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, what what are my releases going to be like this year? I got to do like a release every six to eight weeks. Like Mm -hmm. it's, uh, but there, are they all going to be like progressive house? Cause that's like what I love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I, once I started to teach more and get more comfortable in like myself and like my knowledge, I was just like, um, it doesn't actually fucking matter. Like Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make stuff and like, Mm -hmm. it's going to sound like me. Cause like I'll show my songs to my friends Mm -hmm. and regardless of whether it's a you know melodic techno or a house track they're like no it sounds like you and i'm like mm-hmm. i never would really believe it yeah mm-hmm. until i started to change my perspective on things and then now i do and i'm like that i think is one of the biggest hurdles for any artist looking to actually do this mm-hmm. um is getting out of your own head but not just in like that like you know everybody says you got to get out of your own head but like no specifically like you need to realize that like it doesn't fucking matter that much. Like it mm-hmm. doesn't matter. You just need to make it. And mm-hmm. if you love it, other people will love it. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Because it will become not effortless. DJing might become effortless. Production mm-hmm. will become, you know, it's a, a constant push and pull or DJing is too. Mm-hmm. It all is, but yeah. like it's, um, you just need to do it and you need to not put so much pressure on yourself to make the best or to make this, you mm-hmm. know specific subgenre. you just need to do it and mm-hmm. you just need to like you just need to do it mm-hmm. <laughs> and be and be kind to yourself while yeah. you're doing it yeah um yeah that's get out like, of your own way you yeah, know that's yeah. the biggest thing too and like 
finding flow, I think yeah. is what you're mm-hmm. kind of referring to there. Yeah. Especially with Rick Rubin and all his teachings about, you know, just absorbing all the energy that's coming in and then being able to put it out on whatever platform, you know, mm-hmm. Ableton instead of becoming this third party that you have to do, blah, yeah. blah, blah, you know, it just, it, can't, it, it feels so much more effortless to you mm-hmm. when you like find that rhythm and the understanding is yeah. like within you. And it's fun. It should be fun, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> it's hard. Fun. It's hard as fuck, but like you, and it yeah. sucks sometimes, but like you have to mm-hmm. like remind yourself that it's supposed to be fun. So like, yeah, I think yeah. that's a big thing too, going into like the studio with a, an, an air of like play mm-hmm. is so important sure. a yeah. child it's called like ch- beginner mindset mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like child's mindset like yeah. stuff like that is just like um incredible the back to back with willie joy that's a, a producer and like edm focused podcast mm-hmm. that really helped me a lot mm-hmm. um if anybody's looking for a, a podcast I mean, it is <laughs> another podcast. Another podcast. <laughs> another podcast. <laughs> just um, I listened to uh, I listened to Dylan Francis on there oh, and, and yeah. Nostalgics mm. and Jaws and fucking. Oh, they're down in LA, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these people I the who I idolize, yeah. and I was like, they've just got it figured out. You know, it mm. must just be smooth sailing, and it's like, no, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. they're having the same conversations None that we're having with yeah. with their friends and with themselves yeah. in the studio. They're going through the the same things. It's yeah. not just because you attain this level of success as an artist or as anything else that like you've made it mm. or you yeah. have it figured out. And that's like, that's scary, but mm-hmm. also like very reassuring to just know that like life is not a straight path and like yeah. you have to just yeah. like, yeah, for sure. You just got to keep doing it. And that's so true. you don't, you know, you miss a, you post for a week and you're like, fuck yeah. And then you miss a post for a week because you're like, shit, I have other stuff to do. Or like, yeah. you know, you make a song you make four of your favorite songs ever and then you make four that suck ass and it's like well guess what like mm-hmm. that it doesn't that doesn't matter like yeah. you yeah. fucking made eight songs congratulations it's yeah. arcs it's yeah. not we're not robots we don't do this formulaically like maybe some people can and kudos to them yeah I'm yeah. fucking jealous um, if you're out there call me <laughs> yeah. and figure out how we do this together but like yeah. no I totally agree with you like life goes in ebbs and flows and even like I just watched um, the podcast with Will Clark and he had Cascade on yeah mm-hmm. and just his struggle in or just breaking into the european market he was mm-hmm. like it's so hard it's this i was frustrated couldn't understand how you know somebody else dead mouse could do it at the same time and I'm like yeah. this is cascade yeah. wait a second guys this He's is one of the cascade. biggest artists yeah. i have yeah. a fucking newfound respect for those og djs yes. and producers yeah. like just Forging because of away. this mind shifts mindset shift that i've had <laughs> mm-hmm. uh mind shit hit uh <laughs> in the past like few months yeah. um yeah. i am i just yeah i feel like i'm able to like see kind of the back end a little bit more just like a little mm. bit more and so i was watching yeah. some some ultra sets mm. and i was just like watching hardwell watching tiesto like whoever and i'm just like you guys are fucking amazing. Yeah. Like I used to be like, yeah, Tiesto's amazing, whatever, you know, yeah. he's an OG. Now I'm like, no, that's like, that's somebody who's like done this for their entire life. And you yeah. see them get up on the ultra stage. His fucking uh, mixer like got rained on, like yeah. they're waterproof, but like it got rained yeah. on. So it yeah. turned off halfway through his set. Yeah. He takes a step back. He's just like laughing with his buddies. He's like, it's raining a lot. The mixer yeah. shut off. And then like <laughs> they switch the mixer out, fucking keeps yeah. going. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, wow. Fortitude for these guys and girls. So much respect. Yeah. To keep going and persevering and grinding their note like yeah. to a fucking bone. You have to love it in order to have that level. You have so to much have respect. The addiction, the love, the passion mm-hmm. for it for all yeah. these yeah. years. You Nostalgics know? was a really good episode yeah. as well that I listened to on that back to back podcast. She what was, was like, the standout? What, what was something you took out of moving, podcast? moving to LA basically without knowing anybody in LA mm, uh, with no label either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. no manager doing yeah. it all herself and she's like i used to party i used to fucking hang out front left at celebs mm-hmm. with chicks like before she was like yep. nostalgics like yeah. big nostalgics yep. um and she would always just be like hanging out there like you know waiting vibing. she was she was vibing she was networking though. Yeah. she was you know business mm-hmm. mindset like she was there to like have a good time but like she knew what she wanted 100 percent. she's yeah. fucking she's doing it yeah but her her podcast was great because she was like um yeah, she she had a rough time in in LA mm-hmm. for a bit, 
uh, because she was just like, I'm just going to do it myself. Yeah. And it was like fucking hard. That's for her. People hard talk way. about Vancouver being clicky. Vancouver is clicky because we're trying to cross <laughs> yeah. LA. LA. And the scope is of yeah. it yeah. is fucking nothing. Yeah. yeah. Like it's yeah. so, yeah. But she, you know, she came yeah. through it and she's. Yeah. yeah. She's killing it. Blowing she's up. She's brilliant. got all her releases. Yeah. She's yeah. Been, yeah. What, she did just ultra recently. I think so. Maybe. Yeah. Could be wrong. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the yeah. caliber of that. Yeah. The mental fortitude and like mm-hmm. the, the caliber of like work ethic that mm-hmm. those people have it's like it's attainable yeah. it's just like it's yeah it's it's really incredible to see and i have a, a yeah. whole new respect for those people definitely yeah. i mean i think you in a case like that too you can either be intimidated by it and not validate that you can do it yourself too or you can be like oh they did it so can i what one person i've said this for the my entire life <laughs> maybe not out loud but to myself. <laughs> but what one person can do another mm-hmm. person can do if you see yeah. somebody going to the moon maybe not that one <laughs> i mean maybe you could but you could <laughs> it might be pretty hard you're either <laughs> going to pay a whole hot, heck of a lot yeah. of money or you can go to yeah. the space school yeah. you yeah. know and it's like we see our idols of just being like oh okay they're all the way up there this mm-hmm. is what i want to do and it's like you you can do that too yeah 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 i mean absolutely. it's what are you willing to sacrifice what are you willing to do to get there yeah. yeah you can't do you can do i always say you can do anything but you can't do everything yeah that's you can that's do what anything, i'm you can't do everything that's yeah. what i'm learning that kind of takes me to exactly where i am right now yeah. mm-hmm. it's funny how that works yeah. um crazy I was working for myself for maybe eight months, su- supported myself for eight mm-hmm. months. Incredible. Nice. Extremely proud of myself. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Huge accomplishment. Thank you. Especially for In Vancouver. This city. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Vancouver, price of living, price of food, everything. Everything's going up. But yeah. you made it work. I, I made it work. Um, I sure as hell wasn't saving any money, though. Mm. Um, so mixing. Savings. Yeah. <laughs> doing mixing and mastering yeah. um teaching and djing uh mm-hmm. it was paying the bills but you know not much more than that mm-hmm. so i um i was thinking about getting a part-time job but i was just like i don't really you know i don't want something shitty again basically yeah. Yeah. um and then i got this job offered to me uh by my my friend the friend from nimbus yeah my go. best friend full Jay- circle right Jason. here yeah. yeah yeah he he's been trying to get me uh to work with him at uh, it's called Carter Motorsports. It's mm-hmm. a Honda motorbike mm-hmm. dealership right yeah. at the entrance to Granville Island. Yeah, mm-hmm. very, very famous location. For yeah, sure. yeah, great location. Yeah. Uh, he has been trying to get me on there for a long time, but I'm like, I don't, I want to focus on music. And then I was like, you know what? He asked me a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, you know what? I need money. Like, mm-hmm. I actually need money right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. And like, I, I know that this will um, impede my movement forward with music a bit Mm -hmm. but then i was just like i started to think of it like you know is it impeding me or is it just like is this just part of my life right Mm -hmm. and like is this just like it's not like oh i'm climbing this ladder and this is going to set me back like you could say it that way or i could just say like this is the path i'm on like i want money right now it's not like i'm going to stop making music no far from it i'm making Mm -hmm. a studio that i'm like in i had a little like moment with myself in the studio last night it's been a total fuck mess for like the last two weeks the last <laughs> night i like put some shelves up it's on my instagram story i put some yeah. shelves up i got some plants up um and i was just like oh now it feels like a space yeah mm-hmm. and i was like this is like i journaled about it like in my mm-hmm. studio i was like this feels like really amazing like yeah. and i wrote in my journal and i'd really recommend that to anybody as well it's like a, a huge release for me and like mm-hmm. very very good for my mental health i mm-hmm. wrote like this feels like an ode to myself as an artist like i feel like this like Mm -hmm. i'm instilling this space with like myself like your essence for exactly and it's like um it it was just really it was a really nice moment Mm -hmm. and i was like okay so this in in the past i've thought in like black and white like really black Mm -hmm. and white and now Mm -hmm. i'm just like okay so I could think of it like now I'm a motorcycle salesman and like the DJing stuff and it was a different part and it's mm-hmm. like I'm putting one on hold or I'm going back or whatever and I'm, yeah. last night I was just like how about I'm just like doing me mm-hmm. I'm gonna have some money this summer mm-hmm. I'm gonna be able to do some stuff save some money go on some trips with my girlfriend so like yeah. this is something that I wanted to say for anyone who's like followed me for a bit because like I love sharing life updates and mm-hmm. I'm like you know I've been working for myself and like making supporting mm-hmm. myself which is great but like mm-hmm. if you are doing that or you want to do it but then you have to go you have not that you have to go back to like work but that you like 
you know, you need money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you work. Like, don't feel bad about that. We all have to do something. We yeah. all have to fucking work. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm saying this to myself. Mm -hmm. But I'm also saying it to everybody else. It's the same with teaching. Like saying these things to other people is like, it's me talking to myself. And like, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, life is not like a a straight path. The other thing thing too is that especially if you're, if you're trying to do the thing that you love or aspects of it are things that you love when you're like, when you're talking about what you're teaching, that mixing master and all that stuff for money, that's using up a lot of your mental and actual time. Mm -hmm. 100%. So yes, you're doing the thing, yep. but are you doing the thing in its purest essence that you want to do? Mm-hmm. You know, and this, th- I, I saw this YouTube uh, video a long time ago from this uh, photographer goes by the name of Chase Jarvis. I think I got that right. Um, and he was, you know, very successful photographer. You know, he didn't have to like have a real a real job, but he was like the one thing that he was always saying is that it's okay to do the thing that supports your, your passion, you know, Mm -hmm. making money doing your passion is not necessarily success. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can do the thing that you love and you have to do something else to support it, at least you're not tarnishing or ruining the thing you love for yourself. You get to do the thing you love, you know, not everything Mm -hmm. that people love can make a lot of money. No, absolutely. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's not always supposed to. Yeah. And even exactly. if it can, yeah. at, you yeah. know, at a long mixing session yeah. or teaching, like my mouth is dry from talking. I'm yeah. fucking like, do I want to spin my chair 180 and then be yeah. like, okay, now it's fucking creative music For time. Sure, yeah. It's like, <laughs> not really yeah. sometimes, yeah. but not really, yeah, you know, yeah. that's an energy yeah. bar that just sometimes For sure. gets depleted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it definitely, it's a, there, there is that conversation that you do have to have with the young young um young creatives is mm-hmm. that just because you're not making money doing the thing doesn't yeah. mean that you failed 100%. you know and the thing is is like you know when you were talking about earlier like you know your goal was to be famous and travel the world and do all this stuff and it's like okay well what does that mean it means mm-hmm. fun, you know? sacrificing like so much yeah and the thing so is, is and the much. thing is is that Whoop. is is <laughs> is the thing you love being famous or is the, the is the thing you love creating music? Mm. You know, yeah. so yeah. so when you think about okay, saying the statement, I want to be famous. You know, what does that mean? Well, it means you know you might be known by a lot of people, and there's like being famous is essentially means you're very 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 popular. Mm-hmm. So that gives you a certain amount of status, and that might feel good, but it's like you know to what end, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, if you became famous, there's a lot of ways you can become famous. You can become famous because you were a school shooter. Mm-hmm. You could become famous because you, sex tape. you know, whatever, sex tape, whatever. So there's a lot of ways to become <laughs> famous. And yes, that can make you yeah. potentially rich mm-hmm. or, or potentially not. There's a lot of people who are famous who make who have, who have zero no dollars. Yeah. So it's, but the thing is, is that, is that is being famous going to make you happy. A lot of people who are mm. famous are not happy, especially because they're famous. So interesting that you, know? you say that too, because that kind of goes into what you're saying before is like, you did feel like the outsider. You did feel like, you know, you kind of fit in with the misfits and doing all the raves at 15 mm-hmm. too. And it's like, well, that's where you found your home, your community, being authentic to yourself and finding <sighs> people who connected with you, yeah. not necessarily gravitating towards the mm-hmm. popular people or the people who like, you know had all the status and whatever that you know yeah. looks so good on paper sometimes yeah. it's like when That's you true. drop back into yourself and into the music like that is where mm-hmm. your bar gets filled that's, That's where you find true. happiness yeah i had this great conversation with my buddy ryan i'm not sure if we talked about it on the last pod but mm. um the thing he we were talking about was like what is the thing that you do that costs you no energy mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. and 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 I had to think, I had to really think about this, but when you are so passionate about something that you do to you, it's doesn't cost you any energy because it's just, it's the thing that gives you energy to do it. Mm-hmm. Everybody outside of you can see you working 10, 12, 14, 16 hours at it. And it looks like you're working hard using all this energy, but from mm-hmm. your standpoint, it's fueling you. Yes. Mm-hmm. You find what that is and mm-hmm. you can do it forever and you will be successful at it. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. You have to find what that is. What is the thing that costs you no energy or even gives you energy to do? Mm-hmm. You know, and if you can find that, you know, 
for me, photography was that light bulb moment when I was younger. Yeah. Like being on set, doing photography, like taking the photos with people. Like I used to take photos of things and landscapes and street photography, stuff like that. And I like doing it. But mm -hmm. when I started to do portrait photography with people and building sets and doing fashion and all that kind of stuff, I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you yeah. know, when like Found you know, you hear all these, less. especially in you know, when I was younger, a lot of celebrities would be like, you know what? When you figure out what it is you want to do, that whole it just the path just shows up in front of you, and you just do it. And I was like, that's fucking nonsense. <laughs> you know, I love a lot of shit. Yeah. Nothing ever ha that's never happened to me. And then yeah. as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, there's that's the path. What they're talking yeah. and about. You just start yeah. going down the path one step at a time, and it just starts working. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that, you know, being famous, yeah, you'll, that doesn't, that isn't a thing that you can put that energy into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just such an ab abstract thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, uh, what do you want to do? I want to be rich. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean anything. It's yeah. literally nonsense. <laughs> you know, it's, it's absolutely nonsense. It's just a concept. You know, like, you know? Yeah. it's yeah. just, it's a concept. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an idea, mm -hmm. but how it's saying you want to you know be an entrepreneur that makes this or produces that or that's that's a tangible that's thing an actionable yeah. and then that yeah. that could make you rich that mm -hmm. could make you famous same thing with creating music yeah you know i want to create music yeah well that's a thing that's real yeah okay yeah then you create music and then the does that make you famous or rich maybe yeah but if your goal is to make music and you do and you like it that's success mm -hmm. That is real success. And yeah. if you have to work your motorcycle job, I'm just talking about you yeah. because it's your, it's just an yeah. example, but I'm, yeah. this I'm applies to everybody. <laughs> but if you work your motorcycle job to pay your rent mm -hmm. so that it allows you to make music that you love, mm -hmm. that's success. Yeah. You know, you have achieved. Yeah, yeah. You have achieved success. More than what a lot of people. 99% of people. Yeah. Yeah. Are able to do. You know, if you work your yeah. motorcycle job, again, I'm just using it as an example yeah. to, to, to build your, model train collection because you fucking love model trains and that's the thing you want to do every day that's success that is success yeah. for you, you know? and yeah. that's and that's that if, when people think about what if i think if you think about things from what is the thing that gives me energy to do it mm -hmm. or doesn't cost me energy to do it that if if i never had to work a day for money and i could do this every day what would it be? What is that thing? Yeah. 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 Some people call it your life's purpose. Some people call sure, it whatever. whatever. Passion, whatever you want to call it. It is a measure know? of success. Yeah. And yeah. if you can do that to some degree mm -hmm. that you are happy with, then that's success. And if that turns into something that fuels your life, mm -hmm. I mean, that's hyper success. Yeah. 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 And also, I think going back, you know, or going forward in time to mm -hmm. 80 years old and having the experiences of traveling with your girlfriend or for my from my experience, I want to go play tennis. I want to go camping. I want to do all these things in the yeah. outside world. I don't necessarily just want to be in, like limit myself to mm -hmm. just being in the nightclub, just doing the podcast, forcing mm -hmm. myself to, to be on Twitch all the time, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and all these things. It taking and flipping it in his on his head and being like, okay, well, I do have a full time mm -hmm. job. I don't have as much energy for these kind of things, but I also have energy for all that out there. Yeah. yeah. When I look back at 80 years old, my rocker, I'm going to be like, dang, <laughs> like yeah. I did it all. Yeah, I want to travel. I want to yeah. see yeah. the world. And yeah. like, There's... I haven't, I haven't been able to travel yeah. for yeah. almost a year, right? Yeah. I haven't had, I literally haven't had the money to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was working a job I didn't love, but I was like, my girlfriend makes sure that we go traveling like once a year. Yeah. <laughs> and we went yeah. to like San Francisco, Montreal, like mm -hmm. we, we went places and I, I feel like that really helps like getting out of your head. Like, you also getting... learn so much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it's, it's you amazing. Know, in order to create art, you really do need to experience life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Because life informs art and art informs life. Yeah. It's just, it marries hand in hand. And if you don't have mm -hmm. those life experiences out there, what you, you have to pull? have a very traumatic life in order to make art from. So it's either you have a yeah. great have life or a traumatic life, but you need to have life. Yeah, you gotta pull from something. <laughs> you gotta right? pull from it's something. Like, <laughs> yeah. Pick one. Exactly. You know. But, I know we're alive, yeah. but can I go to the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna leave this here. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of yeah. shows and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Is this like a, a separate segment or is it like the same kind of well, thing? Yeah. yeah. No, no, we yeah. can uh, we can stop it. Yeah, yeah, we, we could can say do yeah, yeah. the weekend report and okay. talk yeah, about all the shows good. we've been to. Yeah, that, that, we can we can yeah. get into the present, as you cool. say. Yeah. The moments. Yeah. <laughs> Let us bring us into the moments. Yeah. 
So that stops the podcast, but we are going to be filming the weekend report. So make sure that you guys go and watch it. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank yeah. you yeah. for coming out. Thank so you for inviting us. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, Thank you so much. Great yeah. That was really awesome. appreciated. Oh, yeah. We're getting it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic yeah. first yeah. podcast experience. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hopefully yeah, nothing yeah. will beat it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we yeah. can go on other podcasts. I guess there's more. I guess there's out others there. out there. There's only like 10 million yeah. started every month or something. But anyway. Um, yeah. Today. But ours yeah. is the best for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're the best. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of being the best, please subscribe. Yeah. Follow. He's got yeah. artist features. Can I plug my shit? Uh, plug it all, please. please. I, as much as I have a full-time job right now, and I love that, I still teach electronic music. Which camera should I look at? Whichever uh, one. Maybe that Let's one, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I teach yeah. electronic music production with Ableton. I've been teaching for almost a year now. I like to think I'm getting pretty good at it. The feedback yeah. is great. Yeah. Teach yeah. beginners, intermediate, advanced, sound design, music theory, everything. Because you were saying uh, that other that school's closed now. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. even say that. Yeah, yeah Nimbus, yeah. they closed yeah. down, unfortunately. Mismanagement, lots of drama there. Sure. But uh, yeah, yeah. SA, if you want to go to a music school and pay $20,000 for it. Yeah. Or you can just come see me for 60 yeah. bucks an hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. Way more reasonable. <laughs> I do mixing yeah. and mastering as well. Uh, and I, I DJ. I mean, yeah. I'm sure people know that already. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I teach. That's my biggest thing. I love teaching. Yeah. Contact him, hire him, follow yeah. him. Give us a like, a subscribe. Yeah. Do all the things. Social media, do it all. Follow me, Night Begins, <laughs> and use it. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. I really appreciate it. We'll be here every single week, Wednesdays, for the live podcast on Twitch. And then we release the episodes the following Tuesday. So we will see you next yeah. time. Adios. Peace.